Hi guys and welcome to Simply Scuba. So wetsuits typically come in one of three different thicknesses, three, five or seven mil, uh, which are the most common thicknesses. But you do find some that are a little bit thinner or thicker to make them more flexible or warmer. The thicker the neoprene you choose, the more insulation you have, but the less mobility you'll have. For colder waters, you trade flexibility for warmth. And hoods and gloves go a very long way to keeping you warm too. The most important factor before neoprene thickness is the fit, which we'll look at in another video. But if your wetsuit doesn't fit properly, then it won't work properly. It won't matter how thick the suit is itself. If it doesn't fit, then you will get cold. This is also an approximate guide and depends on how much you feel the cold as well as how long you spend in the water. But in general, this should be a good starting place when choosing a wetsuit. If you particularly feel the cold, then maybe go up a thickness or add a shorty underneath your wetsuit to boost the warmth. The thinnest type of suit is a rash vest or a one mil suit that will give you the most flexibility whilst protecting you from the sun and bumps and scrapes. If the water temperature is going to be around 27 degrees Celsius or higher, then all you should need is a good rash vest or a two to three mil shorty max. If the water temperature is over 25 degrees, then this is three mil full length territory if you're scuba diving. Just remember that while it may be 25 degrees on the surface, it will be colder the deeper you go, and you'll feel a thermocline if you're not wearing a thick enough suit. You can drop two degrees pretty quickly, just going down about 20 meters, and more in certain areas. Five millimeter wetsuits are the most common suit thickness that divers go for, and are made for temperatures between 15 and 25 degrees Celsius. 5 mil is the great Goldilocks middle ground between the thermal warmth of a 7 mil and the flexibility of a 3 mil. But not all 5 millimeter suits are made the same, so some will be warmer and more flexible than others, but I'll talk about some features later. Water down to 10 degrees, you can dive in a 7 mil semi dry with a hood and gloves, but I'm often in a dry suit at these temperatures. 7 mil suits are fairly cumbersome and buoyant, but they will keep you warm, especially especially semi-dries, as they keep you dry for the first part of the dive, much like a dry suit. 7 mil have to fit particularly well around the cuffs and the ankles, and try to overlap layers like gloves and hoods as much as possible to slow water migration. Anything below 10 degrees is really dry suit territory, which allows you to dive inside an airtight suit that you can use in warmer water too if you really want to. Dry suits require special training and procedures to dive safely, but they are the preferred choice for many cold water divers, as air is a much better insulator than water is. If you're unsure on the water temperature of where you're going, then we've drawn up this handy graphic that you can find on our website if you need more time to check it over. So this is to help you find out what the average water temperature is around the world. But of course it changes over the year, so in the summertime it's gonna be warmer and the wintertime it's going to be colder. For places like the Red Sea, you'll be looking anywhere between a shorty and a five mil with recreational diving. South of the Red Sea, in places like the Maldives or the Philippines that are close to the equator, then you should be fine with a three mil full maximum. But double check the average water temperature at the time of year that you're planning to go. Beyond thickness and fit, there are a few other factors that affect the warmth of a suit. So look for the internal lining of the suit as these can trap water more effectively, which keeps you warmer. Seals around the neck, wrists and ankles slow water from flushing in and out of the suit, keeping you warmer. Also look under the zipper and the type of stitching on the suit. A flush guard underneath the zipper will stop water from flushing in through it, and something like a blind stitch means that there aren't any puncture holes through the neoprene. Some stitchings go all the way through the neoprene, which water can seep through slowly. You may also be tempted by some surfing or other water sports wetsuits. The downside to these is that these are made to be flexible so that surfers can move, but they sacrifice their crush resistance. So the deeper they go, the colder they'll be. Surfing suits aren't made to go down very deep, but scuba wetsuits are made of pressure resistant materials. That means that they're gonna stay warmer as you go down. So that was a good look at wetsuits and thickness, but let us know in the comments what thickness suit that you use in what temperature to better help others choose a suit for them. 
Thanks for watching and safe diving.